Hello everyone, I am Anuj Nakade and you are watching Live Law. Yesterday on the 7th of August, the Rajya Sabha passed the contentious Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Amendment Bill of 2023. The bill seeks to dilute the powers of the Delhi government over services. Our regular viewers will be very well aware of the dispute between the Lieutenant Governor and the government of NCT Delhi over the control of services, given the fact that the dispute has been heard extensively in the Supreme Court in the last few months. We have made several videos covering the proceedings in this dispute. You can watch the videos through the links in the description of our previous coverage. On the 11th of May, a constitutional bench of the Supreme Court passed its judgment stating that the Delhi government will have power over the services except police, public order and land. A week after the judgment, the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Ordinance was passed by the President of India, which essentially overturned the Supreme Court's judgment. Notably, under Section 3A of the Ordinance, the Delhi Legislative Assembly was not given powers over Entry 41 of List 2 of the 7th Schedule of the Constitution, and the Entry 41 relates to services. The Ordinance also contained Section 45D, which stated that notwithstanding anything in any other law, all authorities, boards, commissions, and statutory bodies in and for NCT Delhi shall be constituted by members appointed by the President of India. After the ordinance was promulgated by the central government, the GNCTD had approached the Supreme Court, challenging this ordinance. The GNCTD had challenged, amongst other things, Section 3A and Section 45D as violative of the Supreme Court's previous judgment in the matter. Notably, just last month, the Supreme Court also referred the challenge of the Delhi government against this ordinance to a constitutional bench. The Government of NCT Delhi Amendment Bill of 2023 conspicuously does not have Section 3A but Section 45D has been modified from the ordinance into the bill. In the bill, instead of Section 45D, the appointment shall be made in relation to the bodies created under Parliament law by constitution or appointment or nomination by the President and for bodies created under the Delhi Assembly laws, the National Capital Civil Service Authority shall be recommending a panel of suitable persons for constitution or appointment or nomination by the Lieutenant Governor in accordance with the provisions of Section 45H. The National Capital Civil Services Authority is a permanent authority to be created by this bill to take a decision with respect to posting and control of civil servants. The authority will be headed by the Chief Minister of Delhi and will consist of the Chief Secretary of the Government of Delhi and the Principal Home Secretary of the Government of Delhi. The authority can make recommendations to the Lieutenant Governor regarding transfers, postings of all Group A officers and officers of DANICS or the Dadra and Nagar Haveli Civil Services officers serving in the affairs of the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi except for officers handling matters related to public order, police and land. The authorities can also make recommendations to the LG regarding vigilance and non-vigilance matters for the purpose of initiation of disciplinary proceedings or grant of prosecution sanctions in relation to these officers. And just like the ordinance, the bill also seeks to confer the final authority regarding control, posting and appointment of services personnel to the LG. In case of difference of opinion, the LG's decision will prevail. As to why the bill was necessary, the statement of object and reasons of the bill reads, and I quote, In the view of the special status of the National Capital Territory of Delhi, a scheme of administration has to be formulated by a parliamentary legislation to balance both local and national interests to reflect the aspiration of the people through the joint and collective responsibility of the Government of India and the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi. The bill was highly contentious right from the introduction of the bill. While introducing the bill, Home Minister Amit Shah denied that it is contradictory to the Supreme Court's judgment and said that the court has recognized the power of the parliament to make law in relation to the services in Delhi. He said, and I quote, The constitution has given the house power to pass any law regarding the state of Delhi. Supreme Court judgment has clarified that parliament can bring any law regarding the state of Delhi. All objection is political. Opposing the bill, INC MP and senior advocate Dr. Abhishek Manusinghvi said, and I quote, This bill is wholly unconstitutional, fundamentally anti-democratic, and frontal assault on the regional voice and aspirations of Delhi. It violates all principles of federalism, all norms of accountability, models of assembly based on democracy in the basic structure. 
Former Chief Justice of India and present Rajya Sabha MP Ranjan Gogoi also made his maiden speech in the parliament to endorse this bill. While attacking the invocation of the basic structure doctrine by the opposition in this discussion, he stated that the very doctrine is very debatable. His exact words were, and I quote, Does it violate the basic features of the constitution? There is a book by Tehtaman Andharujana, the former Solicitor General of India on the Keshavananda Bharti case. Having read the book, my view is that the doctrine of the basic structure of the constitution has a debatable, a very debatable jurisprudential basis. The bill covers all vigilance and non-vigilance cases for initiation of disciplinary actions for these officers. According to senior advocate Dr. Singhvi, the objective for this provision is clear. They intend to create, quote, an environment of fear and hysteria to intimidate civil servants to exercise control over them. What do you think about the GNCTD amendment bill? Let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to know more and find out more about the notable comments of the members of parliament or to read a more detailed analysis of the bill, please visit our website at www.livelaw.in. If you found the video informative, please like the video. And if you want to support our work here, please consider our channel as a member for just Rs 89 per month. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you.